velho não tem todo iluminado. Pelo tráfico, pela milícia. Não existe um território livre. E é que a gente está indo agora? É dominada por quem? Eu prefiro não falar. Mas ao tráfico, se você traz problema para eles, você vai ser cobrado. I've been investigating drug traffickers for over 15 years. Often, I'm a lone female journalist surrounded by masked criminals, 99% of whom are men. It's starting to boil and the crystal is starting to form at the top. But recently, I've heard tales of a new breed of narco trafficker. Women. Rumor has it these brash cocaine queens are helping revolutionize the multi-billion dollar drug business. And I'm on a mission to find them. A mulher tem todos os espaços. Se não há um espaço diferente. We'll call my driver Luis. He's a Rio native whose family has connections to the city's criminal underworld. Mas você acha que as mulheres aqui no tráfico em específico é trabalhar o dobro para ganhar o respeito que os homens têm, não? A mulher sempre é mais cobrada, né? A mulher sempre é vista como frágil. Pode você conquistar esse respeito, né? The woman I'm searching for is definitely earning it. She calls herself Hello Kitty. Just 21 years old, she's one of the most wanted drug traffickers in all of Brazil. The prime suspect in multiple armed robberies and murder, and a rising cocaine distributor for one of the country's most powerful drug gangs. And my sources say she's holed up in Rio's favelas. The slums and shanty towns that house more than 1.5 million people, nearly a quarter of the city's population. So we're entering the favela right now. I have to stop because there's these barriers that exist at the entrance. If anyone is trying to invade, it will slow down any invasion by the police or rival gangs. So this is the things that you have to do when you enter the favela. Turn on the lights, you see the hazard lights are on. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. okay. Stop, stop, uh, stop. Down, 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 down. Senhor meu Deus e meu Pai. Nós estamos aqui porque acreditamos no milagre. Porque a Tua Palavra diz que Tu és socorro bem presente na hora da angústia, Senhor. Senhor, quebra os aguilhões. Senhor, e tira ela daqui. Porque a Tua, Senhor... When Brazilians boast that God made the world in six days, and the seventh he devoted to Rio de Janeiro, they're not talking about the favelas. They're talking about this. But there's a flip side to these sugar-coated pictures. A kind of tale of two cities. Extreme poverty fuels Brazil's black market. So much so that today, after the United States, Brazil is the world's largest cocaine consumer. I've lived in Rio and have spent time in many favelas. Places where crack, weed, cocaine, and other illegal substances are sold out in the open. To safeguard the drug market, these slums are protected by criminal gangs and their gatekeepers. People like this woman. What a bitch, what a bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Complex, say, tá com, tá de boa? Boa, tá com a vontade. É isso, é isso, então, só focar mesmo, entendeu? Os quatro rodas que sobe. It's rare to see a woman in a row like this. But here I am, 
talking with this gang member in front of her kids. She tells me to call her Perigosa, which means dangerous. O que é que elas falam sobre assim, sobre o mundo do tráfico? Elas querem fazer parte do mundo do tráfico? Não, eu nunca, nunca deixaria eles se envolverem com nada disso. E sabem que isso é errado, mas eu preciso fazer isso para elas poderem ter um calçado, ter uma roupa e ter uma comida no prato. Perigosa's job is to oversee a 24-hour surveillance network comprised of 21 lookouts, called radinhos, Portuguese for the little radios. They are the eyes and ears of the narco-traffickers. Favelas are like fiefdoms. Most are controlled by powerful gangs. Perigosa's people monitor all entries and exits, so they can alert the gang leadership of any invasion by rivals or cops. Despite her key position, Perigosa is judged by her neighbors. Ali a mulher está com os filhos ali com um rádio na cintura. Aí o que seja amanhã os filhos seguem o rumo o rumo da mãe. Eu até eu no meu trabalho eu sinto isso às vezes porque eu trabalho viajando pelo mundo e eu tenho um filho em casa também, né? E sempre me perguntam, ah como é que você faz esse trabalho e deixa teu filho? E há sempre um julga, um julgamento do meu papel de mãe. Você acha que os homens pais de crianças são julgados da mesma maneira? Não, não são julgados. Até porque para um homem eu acho que é tudo, eu acho que é tudo mais fácil. Você já ouviu falar na, na há uma, acho que é bem famosa chamada Hello Kitty? Hello Kitty. Já. Eu soube que ela ostentava bastante, né? Hum. Até porque ela tinha para isso, né? Hum. Olha, então vocês, né? O cargo que eu levo é né, um cargo alto, entendeu? Até porque eu armo, não ando com arma. Perigosa tells me that the women who truly rise through the ranks are the ones who put down their walkie-talkie and pick up a gun. And if I want to find a cocaine queen like Hello Kitty, I need to get closer to the product. It's time to pound the pavement. Luisa's uncle was a founding member of the country's oldest drug gang. Comando Vermelho, the Red Command. The same gang Hello Kitty is set to work for. I think it's here. So that's where we start. Oi, tudo bom? Posso, posso entrar? Oi, sou a Mariana. Tudo bom? Você conhece uma traficante que se chama Hello Kitty? Eu já ouvi falar, só não sei de qual favela que ela é, qual comunidade. I shouldn't be surprised. Rio is a city of some seven million people. And the Red Command has many factions. It's not easy finding one woman, even after the gang has opened their doors to me. Hoje em dia tem mina que é até dona de boca. Há uma mulher que, a gente, que eu tenho ouvido falar muito, que é uma que não sei se vocês já ouviram falar, que é a Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. Pode? Ela era rival. Ah, era? Não sabe o que aconteceu. Ah. E se eu estivesse procurando Hello Kitty? Ela acha, acha, que, acha que eu consegui oh. encontrar ela? Não sei se eu tive a discussão, mas parece que eu vi gente ali. Vocês fa fazem isso, esse trabalho vocês fazem todas as noites? A hora que sair lá, eu trabalhar e não trabalhar. Talvez. Mas tem assim tanto consumo aqui no Rio? Porra, o consumo mais se consome. Mais do que feijão com arroz. <risos> Por que, que você acha que se consome tanta cocaína? Não, não, não. não tem outro ponto de fuga, eles fazem em cima do tiro. Eles fazem armado em cima da cerveja e da cocaína. I'll take the maestro's word for it. He's a 60-year-old career criminal who now cuts cocaine for Comando Vermelho, the Red Command. 
one of three trafficking organizations that controls all of the cocaine in Brazil. What I'm discovering is that over the past two decades, Brazil leveraged its location, bordering every coca-producing country, to become a global distributor. While Mexico's cartels move cocaine into the United States, Brazil's gangs are now the top suppliers to Europe and Africa. But a lot of this powder remains right here to satisfy the growing appetites of Rio's rich and poor. They have this little spoon and they basically put the cocaine inside these little bags and this sells for five VIs, which is currently worth a dollar. And it's mostly sold in this neighborhood and neighborhoods around here. It's possible the cocaine I'm looking at will be sold by Hello Kitty herself. She works for the same gang as these guys. Qual é a reputação de Hello Kitty? Ele é bonito. Você estava na cadeia? So he was actually in prison recently, and he's saying that even in prison they talked about her a lot, that she was really good, she's a really good soldier. Ela é braba. Maestro believes that today's women have a unique advantage, the element of surprise. Cops still assume that cocaine traffickers look like Pablo Escobar, not like Hello Kitty. He says that the police is really targeting the men here. Um, so there's not going to be a lot of men around to do this kind of work, so it'll be up to the women to do it. When I'm clean, no one does anything with me. You can imagine that I'm a person. This is not Hello Kitty. I'm still working my way up Comando Vermelho's chain of command. But she is proof that while women don't yet rule Rio's cocaine markets, they are far more female narcos than I ever imagined. Como é que ia para você ser mulher trabalhando rodeada de homens? Ele gosta nem de receber ordem. Ainda mais por uma mulher. Até de eu dar uma porrada na cara de um aqui, sabe? É mesmo? Pra mim, querendo me intimidar, dele um, um soco na cara dele, na hora. She calls herself Bayern, after her favorite soccer team. Just 25 years old, Bayern came up in the gang as cocaine was expanding its reach throughout Brazil. Now, she's a soldado a narco-soldier who provides security for the Red Command. I have to admit, I'm impressed. Like Hello Kitty, she's a woman who isn't just breaking the glass ceiling. She's literally shooting her way through it. Posso ver eu? Pode. Eu não vou fazer nada, só quero ver. Posso? Que tipo de arma é? É uma Glock. É uma Glock? Yeah. Pente grande para você ter mais munição para trocar tiro, né? Que quanto você às vezes troca o pente, você tá perdendo tempo e o polícia tá chegando perto de você. Aqui é mais concentrado, remetente, quando tu tá vendo polícia parada ali, e tu só mira certeiro nele, entendeu? Inclusive eu já tive uma troca de tiro que eu fui baleado aqui. Uau, você viu isso? She's showing me the bullet hole. The bullet came through this side and came out of this side. These shootouts with law enforcement have become all too common. As cocaine exploded throughout the country, so did gang violence. Today, Rio's police response involves helicopter-borne snipers with shoot-to-kill orders. In 2019, the police here killed over 1,800 people. That's five people a day. Nearly twice the number killed by cops in the entire United States. Still, the traffickers I've met seem to take this violence in stride. Como é que seria a vida assim nas comunidades sem essa possibilidade de fazer dinheiro com a venda de drogas? A miséria se vê na hora nas favelas. 
E troco é salvação. Salvation. That depends on a person's point of view. And tonight, I'll have the chance to ask Hello Kitty herself. My Red Command contacts have finally come through. We're scheduled to meet her on her turf. Okay, from what we've heard, she's gonna be actually waiting for us in the inside of this uh, favela, so we're driving deeper and deeper. So please, please, please do not put the cameras up, he's asking. When we arrive at the rendezvous point, Louise receives new intel from his underworld sources. So, not good news. Um, apparently, we were told she was waiting for us, but then we got here and apparently she's gone. And uh, it's... Uh, we're being told that there is going to be a police operation here tomorrow. They found out through an informant they have at the police. And so when that happens and the word spreads, they go out and they start hiding everything. They hide the guns and the drugs, and that's what apparently has happened tonight. And that's where she's disappeared and no one can find her. Unfortunately, the trail goes cold. Dead cold. The police operation took place the following day and we never re-engaged with Hello Kitty. Just a few weeks later, we received word that Hello Kitty and her father were killed in a gun battle with Rio's police. Yes, she was an unapologetic cocaine queen, but she was also 21 years old and the mother of two children. Cocaine has transformed Brazil's black market and its players. But in the end, I never got to meet the female narco boss I'm searching for. So I head to the source, the world's biggest cocaine producer, to locate a rumored narco queen. The cops and criminals are all trying to kill. So you've been in touch with these people. I mean, they know that we're coming. I'm in touch with these groups, but you have to be careful, Mariana. We are green-lighted by them, but I mean, at the end of the day, they are criminals. The man riding shotgun is Oliver Schmee, a local photojournalist who once helped me gain access to the cocaine highway. The 3,000-mile journey smugglers take to move their product from the mountains of South America to Miami Beach. Now, we're trying to track down a female narco named Sonia, who's rumored to be the second in command of one of Colombia's newest criminal cartels, Los Caparros. What do you guys know about her, this woman? She's supposed to be the boss of the hitman in this area. The boss of the yeah. assassin? Yeah, which is like really astonishing. Astonishing is an understatement. You see, for five decades, Colombia has been the world's biggest cocaine producer. This multi-billion dollar black market was dominated by one man, the king of cocaine, Pablo Escobar. Throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s, Escobar's Medellin cartel controlled every link in their global supply chain from production to distribution. But when the kingpin was gunned down in 1993, his cartel crumbled. The cocaine business, however, did not. It simply evolved. Today, Colombia produces more powder than ever. But the big cartels have splintered into smaller rival gangs, which means more competition and violence. To fight back against the new generation of narcos, 
the Colombian government offers money to local farmers to burn their crops. A lot of coca growers, they started to destroy their coca fields. But now the government is not fulfilling the agreement and they're being threatened to death by the drug dealers. Rumor has it Sonia murdered one of these farmers and then ordered her men to leave his body on display for 10 days. It feels very much like we're entering the heart of darkness here. You're definitely right, Mariana. The man holding the phone is Ivan Vasquez, a former Colombian Special Forces soldier and our security advisor for the region. The voice on the other end is our contact inside Sonia's gang. Bueno, señor. Entonces, ¿qué te dice que tenemos que esperar? Que esperemos aquí, que no nos vamos de aquí. The region we're in is called Bajo Cauca. In 2019, it had a murder rate on par with Tijuana, Mexico, the most violent city in the world. Just weeks ago, eight teenage soccer players traveling through here were taken hostage. Las madres claman porque a sus hijos se les respete la vida y se les permita regresar a sus hogares. Exigimos la liberación de nuestros hijos. Aún son siete los que quedan en cautiverio. They got kidnapped by the same gang we are supposed to meet, by Los Paparos. Three got freed. One they found dead already. So they were, wait, they were kidnapped by the same people we are meeting? Yeah. And is there any guarantee that these people are meeting us and that they're not going to kidnap us? Do we? Well, there's no guarantee. I mean, you are under the control of a criminal gang. There is a risk to get kidnapped. And that's when our contact calls back, with a meeting point. Instead of finding Sonia, we're picked up along the way by a pair of her sicarios, professional hitmen, who order us to follow them. Though 50% of Bajo Cauca's residents live in poverty today, the Spanish conquistadors knew there was tremendous wealth to be found here, hidden underground. As we follow the Sicarios into this mining operation, I assume this is where we'll find Sonia. Instead, we discover the men are taking us on a shakedown. Sonia Sicarios want us to leave immediately, but I want to know more about what's happening here. Before I can ask more questions, my crew alerts me that the gunmen are on the phone with Sonia herself. It seems I've overstayed my welcome. while her gunmen lead us away from the mine. Bueno, señor, Ivan gets a concerning call from his local security sources. 
Over the past 24 hours, there have been multiple gunfights between local gangs, with six people confirmed killed. So this area right now, he was saying, is super, super hot. It seems like every gang in Baucauca wants a piece of the pie, and they're willing to kill for it. In this moment, we are in the own boca of the lobo. De ellos. Esto aquí lo tienen el control ellos. ¿Salgo? Sí, señora. Check all the cars, make sure that there's no one else there or, or any guns. He's also getting all the guns from our security guys, um, disarming everybody. And no cell phones allowed in. Once they take our cell phones, they order us to follow them. It's time to meet their leader, La Comandante. The commander. You see, he just handed the money to him, and he's the only one who's able um, to approach her, the woman. And he's about to give her the money. It's amazing, though. She's the one really giving the orders here, huh? Yeah. In my many years of investigating narco traffickers, this is the first time I've encountered a woman who wields so much power over violent, well-armed men. Okay. Eventually, I'm permitted to approach Sonia. Hola. Entonces, ¿cuánto dinero es? Si te molesta, si te pregunta. Falta mucho más. ¿Y dónde está lo, el resto? Eso es lo que tengo que averiguar con esta gente. Mando a mi gente para que vaya ya otra vez de nuevo. Si no tienen todo el dinero completo, te vamos a decir por máquinas y ya. Hmm. Well, okay. So she's not happy apparently because there's not enough money. It's not the money that she was promised. Hmm. ¿Qué, ¿Qué pasó? Oh, apparently there's like another group close by and they're getting scared. ¿Qué? ¿Es un grupo? ¿Un otro grupo armado? Okay, guys, really, for reals. Now we have to go. Sonia's bodyguards rush her to safety while they prepare for an imminent attack. Oh my God, the guy's got his gun. He just, you know, it's serious when they start freaking out. My film crew and I are embedded with a gang of cocaine traffickers, and a rival cartel is closing in. Okay, the mine where we were just now filming, there was another rival group that came in armed, so that things are definitely not safe because this could be the next, next spot they target. Hopefully this is open, yeah. No, escuchaste? No. Donde estamos nosotros? He started hearing gunshots right where we came from. Salgamos rápido de aquí que atrás hay disparos. Piensas que están bien ellos? Bueno, Mariana, en estos momentos no se sabe nada por si ya entran en contacto y lógico que la tardamos a ver si muertos. As we flee the gang's compound, I realize I know next to nothing about their female commander. A woman who every rival gang in Bajo Cauca seems to want dead. Narco trafficking is a man's world, traditionally. Almost never do you see a woman occupy a position of power, like Sonia. While there have been a few confirmed gangster queens in recent history, often exaggerated by Hollywood. The women I typically interview are low-level drug mules. But maybe these changes in the black market shouldn't be so surprising. 
The fight for equality in the legal market has been happening for generations. I imagine something similar must be taking place inside organized crime. Still, how does a 21-year-old woman end up a cartel commander? The morning after the attack, I discover Sonia's not just alive, she's willing to finally talk. Turns out, it was the Clan del Golfo that led the attack. You can film. They're Sonia's main rival and the biggest drug traffickers in the region, with alleged links to Mexico's Sinaloa cartel. Um, sí que no puedo ver tu cara, pero consigo ver que es muy joven. Te puede preguntar más o menos cuántos años tienes. 21. 21 años. Sonia is young, but so is her group, Los Caparros. They're one of the newest gangs competing for Colombia's cocaine profits, supposedly created by former right-wing paramilitaries who abandoned politics and embraced crime. ¿Cuál es tu posición ahorita en el grupo? Yo soy comandante del sector. Eh, eres, imagino, tal vez no, pero eres una de las únicas mujeres, imagino, con una posición. Sí. ¿De dónde está la finura que le mostré a ellos y a los viejos? Uh -huh. pues, I think so. And you didn't have a dream to be a woman to be a woman? I wanted to be a Sonia tells me that, like most people in Bajo Cauca, she grew up in poverty. When she was 12, her father was murdered by a local paramilitary gang. Sonia went looking for revenge, but never found it. What she found instead was love. At 16 years old, she fell for the regional commander of Los Caparros, a man who had grown up poor like her. <laughs> Against her mother's wishes, Sonia ran away, got pregnant, and gave birth to the commander's children. I imagine you part of the heart of your mother, no? Bastante. But I have a lot of respect now. Por quién? Por todo. Respect. It's something Sonia earned during her initiation, when the cartel kidnapped a disabled man and ordered her to kill him. Está super feo. Pues lo vi pidiendo pizza, diciéndome que por favor no lo matara. Y pues yo le igual no lo quería, pero él fue el que insistió, o sea, que si no lo mataba, no entraba a la organización junto con él. Eso fue lo que me propuso, que le demostrara a Finura. Después, él me entregó un machete y me tocó que degollarlo. Él me entregó un machete y me tocó que degollarlo. No, con el machete. No. Y pues yo al igual no lo quería, pero él fue el que insistió. Despite everything I've witnessed covering black markets, it's hard to stomach the details of Sonia's rise to power. Le quitamos la cabeza y lo tiramos al río. Entonces lo hiciste por amor. Sí.
part of me wants to view Sonia's story as an act of empowerment. But all I see is a woman who's been transformed, from a victim of Colombia's violence to one of its chief perpetrators. Final del día es todo para mantener el control del narcotráfico de la cocaína. Claro que sí. Cocaine. It remains Colombia's most enduring and profitable black market. Oh my God. And Sonia is going to show me how she maintains control of her gang's coca plantation. We're essentially surrounded by coca fields and uh, illegal gold mines. This is also sort of, you know, the birthplace of narco trafficking. Pablo Escobar, the Medellin cartel, the cocaine that was produced, it, was, it all came from these hills, from this area. In fact, reports from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime suggest that 70% of all the coca planted in 2017 came from Colombia, from areas just like this. Aquí no es una zona de tanto conflicto, aquí más está todo controlado por ustedes. Sí, el perímetro lo tenemos totalmente asegurado. Que están escondidos. Her hitmen inform me that there are snipers hidden throughout the hills. Oh, wow. It's not long after that I finally see it. The crown jewel of Sonia's power. Necesito terminar esto, pero hoy. A mí también me ataca. Producing cocaine, surprisingly, isn't complicated. Coca leaves are picked by hand, then mulched together, then mixed with cement, gasoline, and other chemicals to produce a raw coca paste. In the past, most of this product was sent north, to the US. But more and more paste is now heading south, to the burgeoning Brazilian market I just came from. These local farmers are paid to feed this growing global demand, though they have little choice. There's a saying in this region, whoever does not sow has to go. 30 years ago, Pablo Escobar controlled all the coca grown around here. Today, Sonia helps manage some 30,000 acres. But Los Caparros are outnumbered and outgunned by rivals. They need fresh soldiers, and they need them fast. ¿De dónde vienen ellos? Se entregan, ellos no los mandan. Muchas personas que también quieren entrar a la organización. Tú me dijiste que muchos de esos son... Recruitados. Recruited. It means something very different in this region. Many Caparos members are actually kidnapped. They're not volunteers. They're victims. Siete jóvenes desaparecidos en el Bajo Cauca Antioqueño desde finales de febrero. The case of the eight teenage soccer players who recently disappeared in Bajo Cauca shot millions of Colombians. But Sonia knows what happened to the players because she was the one who ordered their kidnapping. Entonces tú los conociste. Claro que sí. ¿Están vivos todavía? Sí, 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 pues los mandamos para la tropa. Ellos dicen no, pues los matamos, sí, sí. ¿Cuántas personas reclutan ustedes así, de ese modo, forzado? Los que hay, ¿no? Despite everything she's told me, I'm still shocked to learn that many of Sonia's narco soldiers are innocent young men her gang kidnapped. Eso me parece horrible, ¿no? Perdón, pero es verdad, ¿no? Porque imagínate un niño de 15, 16 años que desaparece la familia así, ¿no? 
No nos acostumbra como a lo que uno hace normalmente. These horrors are all in the service of the product. Another kilo of coke is ready for transport. That's when Sonia's bodyguards tell her she too must go. With so many rivals, they can't allow their commander to remain in one place for long. Okay. She's the boss. She's the most valuable thing here. If she gets killed, then the guys that are in charge of her protection will probably get killed as well. Piensas también que porque hay, hay muchos intereses, muchas personas interesadas, mucho dinero. El trabajo más fácil que uno tiene. A part of me really wants these ambitious women to succeed. And why not? For far too long, it's been mostly men profiting from the multi-billion dollar drug trade. Of course, despite his riches, even Pablo Escobar died in a hail of gunfire on a rooftop in Medellin. Hay alguna modo de hacer ese trabajo sin violencia? No. Igual eso es lo que prácticamente domina los humanos. Tienes momentos en que te sientes un gran sentimiento de culpa por las personas que mataste. Sí, bastante. Tengo que tener muchas pesadillas con él. personas que quizás le, o sea, le rogaban por su vida. Y... Cuando ven que tú eres mujer, ¿piensas que ellos tienen alguna esperanza? A nada. Pues porque saben que soy. Y entonces si pudieras volver atrás, tal vez no le entrarías o qué? Si él no tuviera, no. Yo digo que antes estuviera mucho mejor. ¿Y tú todavía estás enamorada de él? Claro que sí. Just weeks after I left, the Colombian military killed the leader of Los Caparros and captured one of his chief lieutenants, Sonia's lover and the father of her children. Seven of the eight kidnapped teenagers were freed. And the remaining members of Los Caparros are on the run including Sonia, whose whereabouts are unknown. Today, the Colombian government has declared the gang thoroughly dismantled. Narcos come and go. That's part of the deal. Live fast, die young. But more and more, the black market often reflects trends in the legal one. It's like a dark mirror. So it's perhaps not surprising that women are pushing for equality in the most ruthless workplace of all. And they're either desperate enough or crazy enough to do the unthinkable in their pursuit of money and power. Progress can be a bitch. <laughs>